What's going on smart people? As promised, yesterday I posted the skit video and so far the feedback has been just overwhelmingly positive which makes me feel really good and I had a lot of fun making it and you know since people clearly enjoyed it and I had fun making it that's a win-win. I want to put more effort into making those kinds of videos more consistently in the future. As for now, I am just adding some finishing touches to my notes for the Tensor Calculus video, which should be posted on Friday. I can't get around to recording it today, and I can't do it tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving, so it'll be out that day. So today I'm forced to make a video about a video I'm going to make. But I mean, maybe this is good. I never really talk about how I make these kinds of Tensor Calculus videos in the first place. Pretty much all of them are heavily based off of this book, Tensor Calculus for Physics, by Dwight by Dwight N. And it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. But just like any other textbook, there's tons of it follows from and certain explanations are a little bit skipped over and I really put in an effort to fill in those gaps. If I didn't try to do that, if I just went verbatim from the book, I could make these every single week. But that's not as useful. I really want this to be self-consistent and something you can start from the beginning and end and understand everything completely. Like I said in a, in a previous video, if I'm super thorough and you don't need me to be, you can skip to the next part of the video. But if I'm not thorough, then you can't get that information still. I'm really excited for this video in particular because it's the final one before we get to the metric tensor, which is sort of like the gateway to tensor calculus. So in the last video, we talked about how two index tensors transform. In this one, I'm gonna be showing how, how complicated a tensor seems it might just be a product of how you represent it. If you project it onto a certain basis, you know, maybe you can simplify things. Maybe you can present it in a more pretty way or a way that's more workable if you choose a different basis. So we're gonna be picking on the inertia tensor, we're gonna be diagonalizing it and showing how it's easier to work with, talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and then we'll pretty much be done with that section of the book and then really get into tensor calculus. You know, when it comes to this tensor calculus stuff, it's way too easy to just think of what the math literally means and forget that you're really trying to describe something physical. So in the beginning of this next video, I'm really gonna be clinging to a physical example so that you really understand what each element of a tensor corresponds to physically, what it allows you to describe physically. But when I go about these videos, I start obviously by reading the chapter and also referencing the Math Methods book. And anytime I see something like, from which it follows, I am on the whiteboard, going through the steps, making sure that there's no tricks, there's no huge jumps that make it hard to follow. And even if it is pretty obvious, it's still nice to be able to see it sometimes. So if there's something like, angular momentum is not always in the direction of angular velocity, well, let's expand the matrix representation of the inertia tensor so that you can see for yourself how all this unfolds. And if you think that's just an arbitrary example, no, that's actually what I ended up doing. There's a little sneak peek of what's to come, but it, it drives, Meow Meow is just super bored just thinking about it. It's kind of funny because with the humorous videos that I make, they're, they're fun to do and they get lots of views and there's tons of positive feedback, so there's so much incentive to keep making them. But for like the heavy math ones, no one really watches those, but those are probably the videos that I enjoy making the most, so I'm gonna keep making them regardless. And I think for these ones, they're gonna become more and more fun to make as we go deeper into tensor calculus, so I, I'm super excited to keep this series going. Um, let me know in the comments section, if you watch the tensor calculus videos, what topic are you excited to have covered? And I'll see you guys there.